Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Kirikshiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jadley, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so very honored that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends and your kids' teacher about the Reading With Your Kids podcast. And please subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Patty Michelle. She is here to celebrate the Antidotes Pollution Solution. Before we invite Patty into the studio, we want to invite you to connect with us on social media. Facebook.com slash Reading With Your Kids. At Reading With Your Kids on Instagram. At Reading With Your Kids on TikTok. Be sure to check out our Reading With Your Kids page on Pinterest and YouTube. And of course, if you are on Twitter, it's at Jedly Magic. We would also love for you to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. You can sign up for our free newsletter, check out our certified great read wall of fame. You can also use the contact button at the top of the page. Let us know what you love about the show. Let us know what we could be doing better and let us know who you would like to hear featured on a future episode of the podcast. Join us right now from Washington, D.C. Our guest is here today to celebrate her middle grade novel. It's called Pollution Solution. Please welcome to the show, Patty Michelle. Hey, Patty, how are you? I'm doing great, Jed. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm really excited to speak to you about Pollution Solution because it's we, we've made a special effort to have guests on that can come on and, and talk to our, our parents, our teachers who are listening, and talk to them about how we can work together as a family, as a classroom, to help make the world a better place, to to make it more hospitable without scaring our kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like Pollution Solution is doing just that. It is. It is. So so the Antidotes Pollution Solution uh, really aims to engage kids in the use of science uh, to work together to solve different types of challenges. And so in this particular, in this particular book, the, the kids encounter a, a climate crisis challenge that is uh, induced by a plastic eating bacteria experiment gone wrong. And so their water supply is polluted and it's making kids and fish sick and and the grown-ups don't seem to be working fast enough to have any sort of significant impact and so the kids take it upon themselves to apply basic scientific uh activities to really try to assess the situation and come up with solutions to uh to the situation you know this is topical on so many levels uh, obviously, we are facing this summer. We're facing a real water crisis. Um, a lot of of the folks here in the United States are beginning to discover what so many people, too many people around the world, experience every day is that that limited access to clean, healthy water. And in various places in our nation, their water has been polluted and fouled. And and also, a lot of times, our solutions, what we think is a solution, actually make the situation worse. And on top of that, it seems like today, when we're facing a crisis, it's really hard for us to come together and work together to solve the crisis. We seem to want to politicize it and argue about it. Right. And, and I think what's interesting is, you know, clean water... And, and I come from a public health background. Clean water is the ultimate public health, uh, activity. You know, it's where public health came from during the early cholera outbreaks and in London 
and and coming up with clean water solutions and access to clean water was a you know non political basic human right uh, type of activity that many societies um, have been working towards for you know decades and and somehow we've lost we've lost sight of that that somehow we don't appreciate the the importance of clean water and um, and how beneficial it is to our own health, the health of our children, uh, et cetera, and also how there are some basic things that, that a society can do to have clean water. Uh, and, um, and so, and you're right, you know, to, to your point earlier, instead of looking at the, the source of water and making sure that those sources of water are clean and not contaminated, and engaging in regular testing of that water, water quality activities to ensure the quality of that water. We are distributing plastic bottles of water to people, which is actually creating uh, an even bigger challenge with contaminated water. So then we end up with plastic in our waterways and uh, and it's also coming back into our water supply as well. And, um, and this is, you know, just something that is a very solvable problem mm -hmm. if and when people decide they want to start paying attention to it. It's also something that kids uh, who we, we've treated very strangely during the pandemic, we've We've treated children as the sort of group that we need to worry about. And, uh, and that we've actually done them a disservice rather than engaging them as part of the, the solution to the pandemic. Uh, we, we have, you know, disregarded, <laughs> you know, a lot of, uh, what they could have been contributing to. Uh, during the pandemic in terms of solutions. And so, so in the, in this book, uh, what I really wanted to do was identify science related experiments and activities that kids can do themselves that they don't actually need, um, a, a grown up to help them necessarily do them mm -hmm. and, uh, and methods that they could start to apply that would kind of teach them kind of like basic Public health methods as well as science, uh, science methods. Um, and it can be used either in households by parents and their children or in schools, um, by science teachers and, uh, and their students. I, I love the idea of entertaining kids while we're teaching them to, to make learning fun. And, you know, that's something I've been doing as in, uh, you know, presenting educational magic shows for over 30 years. And there are places, it, it boggles my mind. Um, I'll have teachers come up to me afterwards and they'll be angry. And they'll say, that's the same message that I've been trying to get these kids to hear f f for, for nine months. And you come in here in 45 minutes and they buy it and they jump on it and they don't listen to me. And I'm like, you should be happy. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, some people, it seems as though there, there are some people who think you can't be learning if you're having fun. And to me, they have that backwards because I learn the most, whether it's on an athletic field or whether it's on stage, I learn the most when my mind is active and engaged and all those neurons are like sparking and that's when it's open and that's when it's just, I, I feel like I'm a sponge and like information is just coming in. It's like so much that it takes me a while to sort through it. And it sounds like the antidotes is that kind of experience. Reading the antidotes together with your kids would be that exact experience. And it was, it was a complete learning journey for me because I'm, you know, I'm a scientist. And so I do a lot of science writing in my, in my work and academic papers. And, and, uh, and I had to work very closely with 
middle grade fiction writers who were like less science, more story. And, and, you know, in order to get, you know, kids in and engage, you really need to hook them with engaging characters that they want to cheer for and root for. And then you can, you know, embed the science, you know, as, as you go along in, in the story. And so, um, and so I ended up, you know, it, like if you saw the first version of this and you see the current version of it, it kind of went through a whole, you know, uh, a whole like turnaround. And, uh, and that's really where my, um, my 10 year old son was incredibly instrumental in the, in the writing process. And so he, he really helped me think about like what would really resonate with kids his age and, and the sorts of things that, you know, ways that kids would describe things or the sorts of activities that they would be excited to see other kids do and, and cheer on. And, and so, so we do have some, sneaking out of the house and some, you know, working on technology behind the scenes and, uh, and some secrecy. And, and, and I think that really adds to the, uh, to the story and it makes it, it makes kids really want to, want to engage with, uh, with the characters to see what will happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I heard this expression yesterday and I, I'm finding ways to use it so I don't forget it. Um, the difference between news and story. The king is dead is news. The king is dead and the queen is suffering from a broken heart. That's a story. And that's what it sounds like the, your, your son and the other middle grade authors helped you create was to take that news, take that science, and wrap a story around it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then the scientific community helped me make sure that the science was correct. <laughs> so. That's awesome. It, I, I love, I, I love when authors come on and they just acknowledge the fact that, uh, yeah, writing's kind of solitary until you need all the people that you need to make it right and to make it perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and similar to, the the theme of the book, which is that we all need to work together in order to solve these big challenges and to come up with solutions to these big challenges. I think the the book itself came together with inputs from you know a whole range of uh, individuals and uh, and and community members. And so I, I have to say I'm I'm truly grateful for for all the the help that people provided on this. Uh, on this, on this book. You know, I, there's, there's a lot I want to dive into, but first, do you have any idea how we get to the, and and who was the person who convinced us that we had to buy water? You you know, I, I grew up (laughs) drinking water out of a hose, you know, just going up someone's backyard, there's a hose, turn it on, drink the water. It was hot for a few minutes and then it got cool. And we had, fountains and all this and the idea of I remember the first time I think it was Perrier people were telling me oh yes we're buying this delicious water I'm like that's dumb that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. well and in places like New York City honestly the tap water tastes much better than <laughs> and you know, it comes from an amazing reservoir you know, and it is it is some of the cleanest water that you will ever find in uh, in the world. Mm-hmm. And and I don't understand why uh, there's this strong preference for uh, for bottled water. And and I think there you know, I think it, it has it has come from very smart marketing. I think it has come from companies that have discovered that there is a way to make money. Um through the through the selling of of bottled water and and it is it's you know if we did one thing <laughs> you know if, if we focused on one you know thing which you know are you know in the group of say single use plastics so the plastics that you we only use once there's no other use for it and we use it for 
the 10 minutes it takes to drink the bottle of water. And then it takes, you know, hundreds of years to break down that item. Mm -hmm. And, and this is, this is the crazy part. You know, it, it doesn't take a lot for people to decide. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to use bottled water. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're, you were singing to the choir. Um, you know, I, I, I was never a big fan of it. I'm, I'm that guy in the airport that's trying to, you know, gets through security with the, with the big water jug from home. And then I just, you know, I'm, I'm there trying to fill it on the, with the, at the fountain. Um, it tastes much, like you said, tastes much better. What are some of the, the s experiments that we can do together that are inspired by the book? Sure. So, so testing water. Mm -hmm. So testing your water at home is something that can easily be done. Uh, you can buy water testing kits in most stores. Uh, you can order them on, you know, Amazon. You can, uh, and so, so that's something that, that, you know, anybody could do um, to at least understand what their water quality is at home. You know, is it, is it high in, Bacteria, sediments, you know, chemicals, etc. Uh, and then, you know, you can, you know, if, if you do identify, you know, challenges in your water, filtering your water is something that is, you know, basic filtration systems have existed, you know, since, you know, I don't know, a hundred years. Time, yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, and so filtering water, boiling water, basic public health interventions mm -hmm. can be applied in 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 a home uh, or a school, etc. And then you know tracking uh, tracking your water quality, or even collecting say water quality and plotting it on a map across different locations to see if there are patterns depending on you know, the source of your water. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and this is, you know, early epidemiology. This is, these are, these are the building blocks of uh, understanding a disease, understanding how a disease spreads and, and documenting it and following it over time. And these are some of the, the basic activities that, you know, uh, happen during the, the pandemic. These are things that as public health professionals, we do regularly and and it's something that you know i believe that kids uh can also become more actively involved in um and that they can care about the the solution so i'm i'm you know as much as it's important to really understand the problems i think it is even more important to enlist kids in uh in the solutions yeah. and and doing things and promoting activities that get to like the root of the issue. And so um, at the very back of the book, we included a, a zero plastic challenge um, that would challenge kids, you know, not necessarily to get to zero plastic because that's just really hard there. You know, it's it, plastic is especially in countries like the United States, it's in everything. Um, but to be very conscious about single use plastics and even you know, setting aside containers and measuring and counting how many pieces of, you know, single use plastic are you consuming or is your household consuming, you know, when you get started mm -hmm. and then thinking about like how much you can reduce that by and then tracking that process mm -hmm. and, and really trying to get to that, you know, ultimate goal of, of zero, um, uh, zero single use plastic. And so, and I think if we get enough kids and enough households and enough families to really start to do that, we could make a dent on this very solvable problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I love the approach that you're taking in terms of cutting down, you know, instead of trying to cut out and eliminate, because it is very difficult. It's almost impossible. And what happens when we, when we start and whether it's eliminating plastic or eliminating bread from our diet or, or, or beef, or it, when you start and that's the goal, we're going to eliminate, 
it's very hard because we're going to fail. We're going to fall at some point. And, and a lot of times when folks do that, they say, oh, I failed. I give up. I'm not – and they just drop it as opposed to, all right, we'd like to lower this. And let's start by just being conscious of it. And when we become conscious of something, we're much more aware of it and we're much more mindful. And then we make decisions. It's like, uh, do I want to use that or do I want to go over here and use this? And that is a great way because over time and very quickly you discover, oh, I'm getting closer and closer to my goal. This is kind of cool. Now, and, in the, and in the book, the kids create a video game. To, and they and they and they spread it, you know, through social media to get other kids to play the video game. And mm-hmm. so it's a collaborative video game where the more kids use less plastic, or the more they report using less plastic, the more the fish like survive and thrive. And so it's like an underwater uh, video world, and uh, and so kids are incentivized to uh, try to actively use less plastic and 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 through that help save the uh the fish and ultimately the the kids who are also getting sick because the water is getting contaminated and it's starting to to impact their lives uh and um and i think my favorite line in the book uh which came from from gabriel my son uh is that no kid would let another kid die if there was something that they could do about it. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's like the ultimate in, uh, in public health and, and, and somehow, you know, we've lost all like capability to wrap our heads around, uh, around death and, and numbers of people dying or numbers of people getting sick where we've kind of numbed, to to the fact that we now still have, you know, fifteen thousand deaths a day from COVID, and nobody seems to be fussed about those numbers. That somehow that number has become acceptable, mm-hmm. and and it's unacceptable. It's mm-hmm. it, like like n- not one of those people should be dying mm-hmm. of COVID, and uh, because we know what to do, uh, and we know how to do it. And I think similarly with um, with other public health issues, like we know what to do. We, we, we know how to do it. And I think we need, you know, a new generation of people to care enough about each other Mm -hmm. to work together, to make sure that in keeping, you know, each individual safe, they're keeping everyone safe. How would you, suggest for future problem hopefully never a pandemic again but you know there are going to be issues that we face as a community and one of the things that happened with covid is that there was all this information that was coming at us and a lot of it was sensationalized and a lot of it was catastrophized i even know with my beautiful wife she would hear something and she would just freak out and then i would sit down with her go no let's look at the whole story what are the real numbers and it's and so how can we help our kids learn how to discern learn first how to not jump at the sensational not be freaked out by the headlines understand that that's uh that's being done to sell newspapers and 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 instead help them sit down and rationally examine the information and 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 is it naive to think that we can help a seven and eight year old do that i think we have to Mm -hmm. i don't think it's naive i think we actually have to and and actually that's the subject of the second book which is called masters of technology which really focuses on kids helping other kids become critical thinkers of technology and of things like misinformation disinformation etc let alone the stuff that's actually true that then gets sensationalized Mm -hmm. and then thinking about, well, what is the source of that information? Where is it coming from? Is this a trusted source of information and, and discerning between trusted sources of information, uh, misinformation and, uh, and then disinformation. And I think there's all sorts of, 
things that that kids need to be better equipped to deal with because they are getting bombarded with a lot of you know information Mm -hmm. everywhere and and they need to be able to parse fact from fiction and and they need to also be able to decide how they want to you know interact with that information etc to to you know live better lives but um this whole pandemic you know suffered from really poor communication <laughs> from like the very outset mm-hmm. uh in terms of even initial reporting uh and and at what point did we actually know mm-hmm. that that there were cases of covid in in the United States and and did not in those very like early stages take the opportunity to communicate effectively with the general population and or communicate effectively with the general population throughout uh and and I think that has been a, a very big challenge and there have been you know mixed messages here and there that have have really um led to unfortunately like unnecessary death mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so much to i can you can you promise to come back when the second book is available <laughs> and we can continue this conversation i would love to i would i would this has been great and uh i would be very happy to come back and and continue talking about this i I, it's very very important and i'm so happy that you created a book like the antidotes pollution solution a great middle grade novel patty where can people go to find out more about you and find out more about the series sure so so uh you can come to my website uh www.patriciamichelle.com uh, and the book is available for pre-order on Amazon, and it will come out on October 4th. We've had a really great and informative and enlightening time speaking to the author of The Antidotes, Pollution Solution, great middle grade novel from our guest, Patty Michelle. Patty, thanks so much. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Dad. My pleasure. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We're traveling to Costa Rica to speak to Jennifer Friedman. She'll be celebrating her middle grade novel. It's called Toby's Tale. That's the next episode of the podcast. Hey, please be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you find your podcast. Of course, one of our favorite podcasting apps is the iHeartRadio app. Uh, we also love Spotify Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible. We love all the podcasting apps that that carry the show. We want you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. We have a special series focusing on school libraries coming up in September that was put together by our amazing intern, Nicole Belcastro from Emerson College. You don't want to miss it. It is really, really good. Want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to start by thanking our guest, Patty Michelle. Please be sure to check out the Antidotes Pollution Solution. Also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Nicole Belcastro, Mirabella Q. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.